What kind of society runs a respectable, fair judicial system in which just as soon as an accused person prepares a case that completely annihilates the prosecution argument against him, the authorities overcome this simply by deeming inadmissible the defence <coughs> case. Certainly no truly free and law-abiding society. So, Deputy Pittman, it looks like uh, Tony has, has really been let down by, by everybody, by, by the police, the judicial system, the media, I would argue. But Well, what concerns me is <clears throat> Tony's been through all the proper avenues. He's been to the police. Um, he's really been, I think, let down by them. In fact, that was acknowledged the other day when I went down to the police station with him. The fact that this has gone on for so long. It's now been confirmed to him that the police are saying all this information did go to the court, so they had it all. The information as in all the, the as arsenal. As uh, to the petrol bombs, etc., whatever this gentleman had. So we now have to find out what the real grounds were for dismissing this. When the Avon and Somerset police came over, they did the investigation, disappeared, and I, I, I was fully sitting there expecting to be vindicated. Uh, I received a letter from Michael Burt, who was then the Attorney General, and uh, he stated unequivocally that uh, no wrongdoing had been perpetrated by anyone. In the way of the police? Police, lawyers, judiciary, and everything, yeah. And my trial tapes hadn't been doctored. Uh, the other tape recording I'd made hadn't been interfered with. Uh, the main prosecution witness hadn't, last page hadn't been altered. Yet, uh, when it came to to me asking for a copy of the Avon and Somerset Police, verifying all this, uh, he flatly refused under the uh, that wonderful little guise of not in the public interest. Well, I've, I've tried to resolve the issue remotely from thousands of miles away and got nowhere and I hoped that by coming here I could get some assistance from Jersey Financial Services Commission and also from the states of Jersey Police because Part of the, what I consider an offence by the, sale, the investment advisor was a criminal matter which in Jersey in fact had foreseen many years ago in 1967 they enacted a law for the protection of investors and it says very clearly in there if a uh, sales advisor, finance advisor lies or misleads a client that it's a criminal offence and I have documentary evidence that proves that this financial advisor not only lied to me, but she altered the numbers and the suitability assessment too. Well, so you took it to the Jersey Police? So, um... I tried to meet with the chief of the Jersey Police, but he indicated that he was too busy to meet. And uh, after several reminders that I was waiting for an answer, I received a letter from his sergeant, which basically said that they did not wish to proceed with the matter against this investment advisor going on and we go back again to those protecting, encouraging and covering up for, for the child abusers. Uh, the victims are the ones who are being targeted by the Jersey government and the abusers are the ones who are being protected. Everybody can see that, everybody can see that, but the Jersey government really don't give a damn. Um, they are so sure of their own invincibility uh, that anybody who dares to speak against them immediately gets their, um, their, their, their guns turned on them. So we, we spent some time this week, uh, as, you, as you know, uh, a team of journalists came with me to the island from publications in the United Kingdom. And also a filmmaker, a documentarian has come in as well. And uh, most of them are all mainland British, but they have all reached out to me independently. And these victims have been telling us, we hear what they're saying in the newspapers, but what we're seeing in the way they're treating us is the same patterns that caused us to get abused in the first place. And they actually believe that some of the abusers may still be abusing people. If that's possible, then that is inexcusable. But the fact is, is we just don't know. We do know that people who are accused by multiple victims are still in very high levels of this government and they're exposed to children and the vulnerable. And that is just not... Which that gives distrust. Not okay. So that means David Rose is already in place. Mick Gradwell comes in in September 2008. And in, on November the 15th, three days after the suspension of the former Chief Officer Graham Power, Mick Gradwell is talking to David Rose. You, you, the link's on my blog, you can read it. And David Rose is talking about leaked information there also. Now, 
surely Mick Radwell will know what David Rose's angle is. Why is he speaking to, to David Rose? Or, or, you know, I find this just incredible. And it's a very, you know, it's such a serious issue because I, I've, like I've already just stated, the abuse survivors always thought that the states of Jersey police were covering it up. And here we have a senior investigating officer leaking information to a guy who's trashing the abuse investigation. But my concern is that terms of reference are very, very important in any inquiry. And certainly not only should I have been told that parts were being removed, but so should state's members. That was vital. And the fact it was removed, I think it was very, is crucial to the whole integrity of the um, review itself, but also the fact is that it's been denied. Even today it's denied that they're removed, yet they do not appear in the final Napier report. But after reading that and following the Napier report and the Wiltshire report and all the other reports we've had and all the question and answering sessions, I believe that state's members were misled by the Home Affairs Minister at that time. Andrew Lewis. Andrew Lewis, yes. Because again, putting it in layman terms, we get a lot of misled, mistaken, um, all the rest of it. Effectively, you call him this guy a liar. Um, parliamentarians don't call each other liars. They say that people were misled. Now, whether it was, we're not even allowed to say that they were intentionally misled. I don't know what his motivation was. All I know was what he said was factually incorrect. I don't think prosecutors would be able to revisit a case that's already been looked at. Why not? Unless there's new evidence. What, why not? Why not? Yes. Well, there might be cases which they could do. I mean, if so, they, they could if, they could relook at some of these cases. In some cases, they have. Do you think they should? I'm happy to leave it to the inquiry to to come up with a view in relation to specific cases. Haven't these people waited long enough? Um, the criminal justice process never moves very fast. I'm afraid in relation to to matters. The transcript I received of the trial from this court in. Four years, it took me four years to get a transcript of the trial. It's not a true reflection on what was said in this court. Unfortunately, I have documentation from my lawyer who, who gave me overviews of daily uh, proceedings, which um, quantifies sentences and, and, and quotes of people that took place in this court that don't appear in the transcript that I received. Um, I, believe, I believe that there was a miscarriage of justice on a grand scale that took place in this court in 2005 and I intend to prove it but I don't have the vehicle or the access to, to anybody that is prepared to come to here and tell the court what happened on that day or those 12 days. Well as it says it's about corruption, um, many different strands of corruption. Um, obviously we've been through a court case recently, uh, we now know how the Jersey system works for ourselves. The Jersey judicial system. The Jersey judicial system. Um, and it, what we've experienced basically fits in with a, a lot of complaints now that myself and a couple of colleagues are getting from members of the public. And it clearly sends out the message that um, Jersey is not uh, monitoring itself. Law appears to be breaking down. And really it's about time the UK fulfilled their obligations to, to ensure good governance in the island and the rule of law.